Hey, when this is Quake Man, I'm finally happy to tell you I can finally make a video about this. Granted, there were five, no, like three other people I found on YouTube that got a business code and were able to post videos like from the last beta test, which I believe was like Jack Frags and the Quake Pro that I call um, Rocket Jump uh, Gaming or something like that. Uh, these guys already had a video out. Their videos have already gotten a massive amount of views beforehand, so I know mine's going to get overshadowed because I'm a hidden YouTuber. I don't care. I'm going to make a video because I'm going to make a video. That's just how it goes. So, Quake Champions is a game that I've been in the beta for the past month uh, and giving a lot to play time from about an hour to two hours a day when I have a chance. Some weekends I've been busy with work and haven't been able to. And I have a lot of opinions about this game that, again, are mostly positive. Just like I said when I reviewed the trailer when they showed uh, about a minute and 30 seconds of you know, unedited gameplay trailer where they showed us anarchy and everything like that. Um, me actually playing the game, I can tell you straight up that I felt that this game was amazing. I know people, there's some people out there who want to get a little stingy and saying that the movement is not as fast as Quake 3 or Quake Live. Okay, fine, maybe the movement is, but it isn't, but it's a different engine and a different physics engine. The speed of which you see things in a different game, ugh, geez, that was a mess up on the words, Every game has a different speed based on the physical of the engine. That's how it works. That's why when you play Doom, people say that Doom is not as fast as the original Doom, but that's because the physical engine is completely different. I'll let that side and leave the mistake I left in there. But I felt that it was pretty fast. I also like the fact that that some of the champions have a good movement speed to work with them. Visor has uninterrupted uh, strafe jumping speed, and Nyx is able to uh, do a wall jump off wall, similar to what you do in Dirty Bomb or in the old Unreal Tournament. So everyone has different movement speeds in their own way. Anarchy can move much more freely in the air, unlike most people, and I like that. But the heavy characters can't, you know, aren't as fast. But they they but at the cost of, well, not cost, I can't think of the word for some reason, but basically, they have more health, they have better survivability, so it makes sense for them to have the slower movement speed. Um, I still think that Clutch needs a little fixing on his ability just a bit, but uh, other than that, I think it's fine. Scale Barrel, I don't like the fact that um, his charge almost instantly kills you the moment he starts uh, his ability. I don't know, that's just me. Um... I also, there's something else I'll mention later online about the abilities too. But all the characters I felt are pretty well balanced. Uh, I did hate dealing with anarchies because they would always fight, 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 use ability, run away. Because when they use their ability, they get a medicine, which heals them up back to full health, and they get a short speed boost. Um, and I think there's like a, mil like a small 0.5 second of them being invulnerable, or that's just me just noticing it. I don't know if that's true or not. I, I almost feel like I've seen it. I can't be confirmed. But uh, all the characters feel fine. I mostly play as my man Ranger, duh. Uh, but I do like uh, Sorlag a little bit. I like how Sorlag feels. Um, and Nyx is pretty good if you want a good good speed and, and map control aspect. Um, but I feel that Ranger's uh, Slipgate also helps with map control just a bit. That's just my opinion. Now, the weapons, I think they did a beautiful job with the weapons. Um, I wish I was able to talk about this beforehand, but obviously I can do it now. But I think one of the interesting design choices they did with this game was how you can choose which type of weapon you start with, but not the ones on the map. For example, there is a low-graded machine gun, a low-graded shotgun, which is basically a single pump action, and a low-graded nail gun. You can start with one of those. You can choose one of those as your starting weapon. You know, if you're good with the shotgun, spawn with a shotgun, and then you'll pick up a double barrel on the way. I find this to be interesting. It gives people choices on exactly what they work with. Are they good with the, you know, direct hit scan approach of the machine gun? Are they good with the close range support of the shotgun? Are they good with the leading shot with the nail gun? I think that's fantastic. You know, and then there's an upgraded version of those things on the map. However, you obviously can't have all three of those blah 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 you probably can figure that out um but like the there's the standard machine gun that's like quake 3 you had the double bear shotgun which is like quake 3 uh, or quake life whichever one you want to mention um but then the the super nail gun as they list it um i'm not sure how i feel about it it's supposed to be a leading weapon similar to the plasma 
But because the bullets, in my opinion, are hard to notice, it's hard to track. It's hard to lead them. Um, it's also because I need to learn the speed of how long it takes over distance, like the meter, the meter time and stuff like that. So there's that as well. Um, and then there's the lightning gun, there's the rail gun, which, again, I still do not like the design of it, but thank goodness there is a cosmetic where you can get, um, you can get the, 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 the Quake 2 skin. I need to stop stuttering. But I think the weapons feel great. Um, in my personal opinion, I really wish the lightning gun didn't do pushing power. Um, I know people are going to disagree with me, but I do not remember the pushing power existing in Quake 3. I only remember it being added in uh, Quake Live. So that's just my opinion. I don't like the pushing power because it makes stucking people in the corn way too easy. Um, but that's just my opinion. But other than that, I think the weapons feel great. But something I never noticed, and I, I will admit, I didn't discover this myself. I found this from the Quake, uh, the, the, the Quake Pros channel where the zoom feature actually makes a weapon do more damage, specifically with the machine gun and the rail gun. I didn't realize they added a feature like that. That's like almost like aim down sight style. That's pretty freaking interesting. Um, but it, 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 the zoom makes it hard to aim, and so it's not overpowered of the whole more damage idea. But I thought that was pretty interesting uh, to add that feature. Uh, the movement, I think, feels great. Uh, strafe jumping feels great. Uh, but obviously, if you want to go strafe jumping to massive speed, I believe Visor and Slash is the other one that has a good passive for strafe jumping. I think. I don't remember. Um, I don't remember all of their, abil uh, all of their passives. Um, but to go through the abilities, Ranger's ability is a slip gate. You throw it. It's like a translocator. Um, Visor is obviously like aimbot, uh, but it's very short. It's like five, six seconds, so it's not overpowered. It's not, um, and plus each of the cooldowns are like an average of like 20 to 30 seconds. Um, so it's not that bad. Um, Scale Bower makes it where he goes into a full bull rush charge, and if you get in his way, you just instantly die unless you have the, uh, protection power up, which exists. That's something I found out that they brought in. The protection power up exists in this game. Uh, it's mostly on the team maps, which includes Sacrifice, which they included in this weekend's testing feature, which I'll get into the game types in a moment. But, uh, the fact that they brought back protection, I thought was great. I like the fact that they used the Quake, uh, style of the... Penta uh, pentagram of protection instead of the weird uh, shield icon from Quake Live. I like the fact that they brought that back as a good Quake uh, aspect. That's just me. Um, uh, there's Clutch, who his ability is where he gets a shield in front of him, not all around him, just in front of him, and anytime he shoots, it will drop down. Um, in terms of team play for maybe capture the flag, I feel this would be very useful from protecting people from trying to chase, but again, it only works in the front and he is a slow character, so a fast character could escape. It, it's, I feel it's a good team play stuff. Uh, in terms of team deathmatch and deathmatch, it is kind of annoying to deal with. But that's just, you know, but it's not overpowered. Uh, Galena, I believe she drops, like, this relic, which she can heal her herself and her teammates. Uh, and the other ability is where if anyone gets near it, it explodes like a proxy bomb. Um, I found it to be a bit overpowered at one point, but maybe it's just because I'm dumb. But uh, I'll drop it from there. A uh, slash is where she leaves a trail, and anyone who touches it takes like five points of damage, depending if they have armor or not. Um, and then she, if she presses the ability again, she can explode it for massive damage. So she can use it to protect uh, a zone. She can use it to like stop people from walking in, uh, you know, into an, um, the flag zone if the casual flag returns or the power up stuff like that. Um, Anarchy, I've already mentioned, is the, is that, um, is the medicine. Sorlag is where she, she spits you, and if it hits you, you take five points of damage for five seconds. So you'll lose close to 25 health, but then I believe if you have armor, it takes, uh, less damage than normal. Um, am I missing anyone? Oh, Nyx has her phase walk ability where she goes invisible. Um, the thing, the only thing I don't like is when she's invisible, she, you can't hit her. So if you, even if you try to take a guess of where she's going to move, it won't work. I don't like that, personally. Uh, that's just my opinion. Um, but we'll see what they do on the official release if, they, if that becomes too much of a concern with the community. Because I'm one person that says this. Um, Ranger, Sorlag, Nyx, Slash, Visor, 
Clutch, Galena. I think that's all of them. I'm probably missing one, but I think that's all of them. But that's all their abilities. And their passives work pretty well. Like, Ranger's passive is where he takes 25% uh, reduced health damage, which makes him being able to rocket jump a little bit easier than other people. Um, I kind of forget the other ones right now. Um, oh, Scaba, I think, has the passive to where if he takes a good height and steps on top of you, all like Mario style, he'll kill you. So that's pretty cool. So that's all the characters. Uh, in terms of the map design, I love the map design, especially Blood Covenant, because it's a remake of basically campgrounds. Uh, I always call it Camping Grounds. I know that's not the right title. Uh, but uh, but can I, I think it's fantastic. Uh, Ruins of Sargonoth, I think it was the name of it, um, is a fun map, but I feel some of the layout is awkward, uh, to get used to, and that's just my opinion. And then Barrier Chamber, I believe, is the other map, which looks like a hell level, um, is a lot of fun. I like how that looks. Uh, I can't wait to see what the other maps are going to be. I don't know, I don't know what the total map number is going to be. Maybe it's going to be 12, maybe it's going to be 15. Uh, maybe we'll see some remakes of Quake 2 and Quake 3. That would be cool. But we'll have to wait and see until it's fully released. But right now, it's just three minutes in the beta. Now, in game types, deathmatch, pretty simple, uh, self-explanatory. Uh, the only thing I don't like about deathmatch right now is, and this is the confusing part, in deathmatch, the ammo boxes are universal, while in team deathmatch, the ammo boxes are specific. I don't understand why they did that. Why don't they just make it where it's all specific? Why is it that in you know, free for all, it's, it's where every box gives you ammo for all weapons. That's just my opinion. I find that, I, I feel like that that was the same thing that Quake Live did, and that pissed me off a little bit. Um, but yeah, Deathmatch and Team Deathmatch are pretty much the same self-explanatory. If you played any first-person shooter like Halo or Call of Duty or Battlefield, you know exactly what those are, um, relatively, except for Battlefield doesn't have a free for all. Um, then there's Dual Mode. Now, dual mode is very classic to, uh, to most people where it's 1v1. However, in this versions of dual mode, you choose three champions, and you have to own three of the champions, and you choose them in what order you want. Then you fight, and you have to basically eliminate them. It's kind of like, you know, playing Street Fighter's uh, tag team mode or Tekken's tag team mode or any fighting games mode where you choose three characters, you fight, and you have to eliminate all three. Um, I think that's... Uh, I've never tested it yet, because I'm trying to feel confident enough to feel like I can challenge people, because I'll be honest, I'm not a pro. I'm not at all a pro. I know my name is Quake Man. People think I assume I'm going to be one. I'm not. I enjoy the game, and I grew up with Quake for so long. That's the only reason I have the name. But I'm, I'm trying to get the confidence enough to be ready for Duel to, to, to test that out before I can give uh, official opinions about if it's good or bad. But from what I've been hearing, it looks like a very good mode. I do wish that they actually do a legitimate Duel mode where it's 1v1, you only choose one champion, and it's whoever gets to 25. Now, the newest one they released in, the beta, in this beta was Sacrifice. And I got to play one round of this on the stream. And I can tell you right now that uh, they need to fix that mode a little bit. In my opinion, uh, I played one mode and I, uh, one round of it, and I was trying to figure out exactly how to play because it just says, "Oh, pick up souls." And I'm like, "Is this like Harvester from Team Arena?" And kind of, sorta. Uh, in Harvester, you had to kill to get uh, points and then deliver it to your obelisk. And this one, a soul spawns, you pick it up, you bring an obelisk, and you have to defend it for like I think it's like thirty seconds to a minute. Uh, the problem is, is that an enemy team can steal the soul on your point even if you're on the point now i get it's supposed to make you fight back but if you have teammates who don't know what they're doing they could just come up steal it and win and that's annoying it should be to where if it if you are on point they can't steal it every every teammate has to be off point or every enemy has to be off point to steal the soul that's just my opinion i don't like how it feels in this but you know what? Maybe they'll listen to us and change a little bit more. But the mode is very interesting because when I played Blood Covenant again, the map was open. It added more rooms because it was supposed to make sense for a team deathmatch. I love this. Thank goodness Bethesda or whoever's development I believe it would be id. Thank goodness for doing that and not keeping the same layout for team deathmatch and, de uh, and deathmatch. They made the map specifically and more open and different for this game type. I wonder what they're going to do for CTF if that returns, as well as another game type, because we have two new game types we're still missing. Um, so, 
that's sacrifice. It's okay, but, you know, in my personal opinion, I'm just like, they need to fix it, because that's ridiculous, in my opinion. And so, I think that's it for right now. Uh, I think that's all the stuff in the beta I can talk about. Um, I'm gonna have a separate video that talks about the menu, how it looks like in the loot bot system, system. that's probably gonna upload immediately already, but, um, yeah. I like how Quake Champions is handling itself, um, but it, like I mentioned in my uh, video uh, from my stream about the, how the menu is, the biggest thing I don't know is the currency translation. And that's the only thing I'm, I'm curious about because some of the boxes are like 27,000 you know, real money platinum. So we'll have to wait and see how the conversion goes and to see how if it's worth the boxes that they're given for for the fact that it's just cosmetics. I hope though I also speaking of cosmetics of the characters, I really hope that they add more cosmetics to the characters on launch instead of just the three extras we got. And I also wish, and this is just my opinion, I also wish you can actually uh, get rid of shaders and turn them into shards so I can try to get my special weapons faster because I want those uh, skins. I want the skins to where it looks like uh, Quake 2 for the railgun and stuff like that. I want those immediately. Uh, I know this is a very long video. I had a lot to talk about, and there's probably a little bit more I'm missing. But in my personal opinion, I am very happy how this game is going to turn out. When this game gets a quote-unquote a buyable version, I believe it's going to be, I w <clears throat> excuse me, I will be buying that in moment it comes out. Um, now, I did stream just a moment ago, just like from the video, um, so you can watch that and watch it live, or the, the video record you have right here is came from that. But uh, other than that, I think that's all I can talk about. I've been going on for too long. You guys have a wonderful day, and take care, and uh, we'll wait and see when Quake Champions comes live as a free-to-play. Take care, everyone.